Enrique Dans, the professor, the innovator, the man. In a professor, all the student can ask for is passion. The truth is that everything we learn in the classroom we can find on the internet for free. Passion separates the quality of the learning experience. It breeds engagement, relevant ideas, and a space for creativity. Enrique comes with the entire package. All right, let's get started. Who are you, what do you do, and how long have you been doing it? My name is Enrique Dans. I'm a professor in IEB, at IEB School. Uh, I've been teaching here for 25 uh, years. By the end of the year, it will be 26 years. Congratulations, my friend. For you, what is the most important factor when it comes to being innovative? I think it's about curiosity. It's about uh, being able to trigger curiosity. And what has been your experience with curiosity? I try to satisfy my curiosity as much as I can, but then I have problems when it comes to turn these things into reality. I do a lot of exploration, but it's difficult for me to, to do the, take the final step and actually turn things into... I'm more of a thinker than a maker. Hmm, pretty honest. So why do you teach? I try to inspire people to get into um, actually doing things. I, mean, I work with fantastically talented people. They come thank out you. of a process, of a selection process and all that. And my hope is to be able to get these people into doing things, which is the part I miss the most. I normally am not able, normally not able to do. Enrique lives innovation. It is not a consequence of his profession, but rather his DNA. I have found that schools in general tend to nudge people into conformity in many subtle and obvious ways. But Enrique is refreshing. He began our class by throwing rules out the window. He connects by being himself, exuding the confidence of his vast experience. I think the regular person can, can become innovative by exploring more and being exposed to more things that they, they can later on connect with uh, things that they already do or they already know. Mm -hmm. So it's about uh, putting more pieces into the puzzle for people to assemble uh, that puzzle. So for instance, you become extremely innovative when you go to uh, a different city or a different country, not just for traveling, no, no, living, living in a different place or uh, being exposed to uh, training, to, to uh, let's say management training, when it's good, when it's good enough to inspire you to uh, not the type of traditional training that you have to study and, and no, no, no. The type of things where you actually do things when you really become involved in the discussions and stuff like that, you, you dynamize your mind and then you connect the pieces. That's a, that's a magic moment. And then some things come out of uh, serendipity, luck, yeah. need sometimes. Engage. Challenge yourself. Think outside your box. Let's change the world. Let's change the world. You lead and I'll follow. But speaking of our world, what are you noticing out there? Right now what I feel is that we are in a transitional moment. Uh, for several years we've been witnessing how more and more entrepreneurs were getting into the soft side of it, the software part. Basically coming up with applications, coming up with ideas that could be built with a code, with a piece of software. That was pretty much it. My main concern, even though I love software and I love this type of uh, applications and all that, my main concern is that the, 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 the real life out there is not just software. There are tangible products, products that can be I mean, manufactured, someone has to manufacture and someone has to design them, etc. And that's why I'm right now trying to put more effort into explaining my students that uh, they can play with hardware, they can play with uh, 3D printing, design, these type of things, so, so they can come up with ideas that represent a little bit better than the real world. So they don't stick to software, they can decide to do other things that are more creative. Okay, now tell us, make it interesting. What is it about innovation that draws out your passion? Well, the thing about innovation is the human component on it. So, um, yeah, basically I'm a technologist, I love technology and I love the effects of technology. But one of the, one of the things with technology is that it strongly depends on how we accept technology as individuals, as society, as a 
companies, etc. So the, the idea of the diffusion curves, how do we start uh, playing with an idea first at the individual level, third, the, uh, then we realize that other people, other individuals are also playing with the idea and we team together or we learn from what the others are doing. There's, there are a lot of uh, social components built into it, from uh, social prestige, hey, I'm uh, the first one trying this, to uh, envy, to uh, many different uh, feelings that trigger people to, to, to the, 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 the wish to, to innovate. So that's what really fascinates me is how innovations get diffused. And a word of advice to the future innovators out there. I would say learn to recognize the, the diffusion curve. I mean, learn to understand how the diffusion, the, the diffusion curve works, the, how the diffusion of innovation works, and whether a particular innovation is in, at an early stage or already matured. Uh, if, you're, if you understand this curve, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the work done. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. It has been an honor.